Most tax pros leave a message. It's Jane. I'm moving on to a TurboTax expert who beat your price. Adam Devine, tell him how I feel. Hey, tax pro, she's been thinking twice. Best believe TurboTax will beat your price. This is a tax break. Switch to a TurboTax Live expert and we'll beat what you paid your pro last tax season. Make the switch at TurboTax.com slash beat your price. TurboTax full service only. Sign up by 12-20-2024 and file by 4-1-2025. Full details at TurboTax.com slash beat your price. The, the, the same day, of, a few hours later, I went and saw a, a family medicine doctor. So a nurse and her examined me thoroughly. Did she find any evidence of contact? Um, I mean... Or a bite, anything? Well, the evidence was I was very tender to palpation. Right, that's something you tell her, right? Like, in other words, she doesn't know if you're tender. You're the one who says, ouch. This is the plaintiff, Douglas Kinghorn. He says he entered the front door to a store and the defendant's dog leaped at him and bit his testicle. The guy then kicked him out of the store. The EMTs came, and he was taken to see a doctor, a woman doctor, no less. He had to have five different people look at his private parts. He was in pain for several months and is suing for $7,999, the amount he's owed for medical bills and pain and suffering. This is the defendant, Camilo Macedo. He says the plaintiff got into a loud altercation with a woman in front of his store, and then the guy came into his bakery grooming salon. His dog greeted him in a friendly way. The man immediately started yelling he'd been bitten, which wasn't true, and he told him to step outside. The plaintiff started kicking his glass door. He called the cops, and, well, here they are. He's accused of failing to control a snippety dog. All parties, appreciate your right What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Millian is presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Madam. Thank you, Douglas. Mr. Kinghorn, you are suing Mr. Macedo for $7,999 in a state where the statutory max is $8,000 in medical bills and pain and suffering because, according to you, his dog attacked you and bit you in the testicles. Tell me exactly what happened. Okay, uh, I guess you could say you could blame it on the iguana. Uh, I've been having trouble with the uh, iguana. I live in a home in Florida. We have a, a pool with a, a screen around it. and. Uh, Guana keeps, you know, using our our pool for restroom. So how do uh, they get in? They're terrible. They're all over the place. Yeah, they, they actually climb on top. They're an I, invasive I species. They kill all the vegetation. It's true. They're, they're not really dangerous to your pets or anything, but they're just disgusting. It, it took a long time before I figured out what it was doing, actually, because it was so unusual. But anyway, so on uh, the back of my mind, it's been going on for a while, but in the back of my mind, I've been meaning to, to speak to somebody about a repellent or even, I don't know about a poison, but some kind of repellent. So um, it was been in the back of my mind to, to, to speak to somebody. We already had somebody bring traps that didn't work. No. So... Uh, what happened was on that day I was picking up my uh, medication. There's a pharmacy next door to his uh, his pet store. Uh, I drove in, and when I drove in, uh, I went to uh, to go to park near the um, pharmacy. And what happened was a guy was backing out, and uh, the, he was driving a big SUV, and I couldn't really see around him. And uh, so I took his parking spot, and thought nothing of it. I was just going to go in and out and uh, get my medication. And some woman came storming over, really mad and uh, start yelling at me about this and that. It was a really bad thing I did. Whatever. Wait, stop. I have no idea what you're saying. A, a woman started yelling at you. Why? Because she, cause I, she said I took her parking space. But oh, because she had been waiting for that space. Yeah, but I didn't see anybody. I would never have done that. I just didn't see anybody. Okay, and did you tell her that? SUV, did you offer to I, I give her the also, space back? And actually, if I would not... Did you take, offer to give her the space? I did, actually. <laughs> you did? Yeah, I did, you know. I did. Or I, did I, the I, two I, of you just stand out there arguing? Um, both. We kept arguing. Well, no, you, there's nothing to argue about if you get back in your car and give I her the space. Her, I actually says, what do you want me to do, move the car now? I'm just going to run in and get my medication. Well, then, yeah, then that doesn't mean you offered the space. Anyway, go on. Okay. I did. Well, uh, how is that? Then get in the car and move your car, and then there wouldn't be any arguing. But the arguing got so bad that apparently someone from your store had to come out and tell them to move it along because they were disturbing the people, yes. right? Yes. Well, did you actually hear the argument? No. Okay. So one of your employees does what? She went to the door. She 
told them to just take the fight somewhere else someone else just not in front of your store yes okay so go on what happens okay you know i it's funny because until i watched the video i don't remember that happening but i wait went you don't me. wait stop you don't remember someone t telling you to stop arguing in front of their store well, if you watch the video, she just kind of like peeked her head out. And I didn't know she wasn't talking to me. I thought she was talking to the woman or talking to somebody. I didn't really see her because I was like, I had a woman get screaming at me in my face. I was a little bit worried about the woman actually in front of me, not the woman. I know. That's why I would side. solve the problem so easily by saying, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. I'd get in my car and I'd find another parking space. That's what I would do. But go ahead. I, I know. But it wasn't that simple at that point. <laughs> it, well, it is very simple. But go ahead. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, so... Uh, okay, and the reason I'm saying this is because I've seen your video, and I saw how you went whoop, into the parking space, didn't you? You're no, going, ha, no. you're humming. Let's see it. No, you are. I, slow, I very slowly drove into the parking lot. No, you no. didn't. Let's see it. No, you're on... Sorry, your well, memories. Let's, no, let's see it. Your memory deceives you. Hold on. Yeah, I'm driving pretty slow, actually. Can you stop talking? Yes. <laughs> Is that the car that I see reflected? That's you getting out of your car, and isn't yes, it, Honor, that's the car that I see reflected? Who got angry? All right. Um, either way, we're not here about you taking the parking space, but I just need to set the tone for the stuff that happens later because it's nuts. All right. So now, uh, his empl his employee comes out. According to you, you didn't even know his employee came out. I knew someone until you saw it on the my video. Side, but I didn't know it was about directed to us or anyway. You have to understand while that was going on off camera, I have a woman yelling at me in my face. That's right. what I was worried about. So she's yelling at you, what's she saying? She never stopped. Blah, 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 I had some nerve, you know, that kind of stuff. Okay. I was like, come on, I've been married almost, almost over 25 years. Are you kidding me? I, I don't want to do anything to a woman like that, you know, and disrespect you know somebody. All right, never so then you go like into the pharmacy and what happened? <laughs> so I went to the pharmacy, got my medication. She was there, you know, perusing stuff and she had let it go by that point. And then, uh, and then that, that was the last time I saw her. And then I went with my, my bag of uh, 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 Rizotriptan. Yeah, right. migraine, migraine medication. And as I walked over, and I was like, oh, there's a pet What store. do you take for migraines? Uh, Rizotriptan. It's a, it's a triptan family of uh, serotonin agonists. It's not, a, it's not a narcotic. Okay, go on. Yeah, so it's the only thing that really helps migraines. So anyway, so with my little bag of medication in hand, I was like, oh, the, the, I went back to the, go to the pet store. And I didn't even, if you see the video too, you can't even see. I didn't know he was standing there with the dog when I opened the door. I thought I was just going to walk into a pet store like you would walk in. Okay. And I walk in and suddenly his dog's right there and just reaches out, you know, jumps out and, and, and bites me. I never even. Where did bit, the dog bite you? He bit me right at the entrance, like right at the threshold. I didn't actually I meant on your store. body. Uh, it, he bit me in the left testicle. And uh, did he puncture you? No. But I didn't know that at the time. Okay. So what do you say to him when that happens? Um, he bit me, and what happened was I was kind of stunned, and I stepped into the store because I still had my mind getting a. It was not just for the iguana bait; it was to get a um, uh, a leash for my uh, brother-in-law. And uh, I told him I was like, I was just like in a daze. I was like, Hey, your dog just bit me, and, you know, I, and he just didn't even care. I mean, he did, he ignored it, and I was like, I need help. You know, I'm, it hurts. You know, I need. You know. You know, you got to say something. He wouldn't say anything. And finally, he just started threatening me and telling me to leave. And then he actually said he would physically remove me. And then I told him, oh, I, got, I would like to see that. I'm not going anywhere. And then uh, his employees, meanwhile, he's got, you know, I, I can't count the exact number, but at least four or six young women there working and other people there. You know, there's several people there. Customers, too? At that, there might have been one customer in the store. I can't remember. But it, the what, did, what, what were they all doing? Uh, standing around waiting for their, their talking with them, their dogs are getting. No, green. what did they say to you? Oh, oh they're they're yet yeah, like they're like backing him up, I'll show them their phone. They called nine one one. I'm like, well, good, call nine one one. How did it get to nine one one if you're just calmly saying to him, you know, your dog bit? Ma'am, I, I, you know, he has video of his store. I hope he brought that. I'm gonna see it. But oh, what okay. I'm asking you to tell me first, and then I'm okay. going to ask him oh, to that, tell that, me that first. That really helps my case, Ron. I'm glad you yeah. told me that. I'm glad he brought that. Because mm -hmm. you'll see him a step towards me. I never approached What him. I want you to tell me is yes, what happened. At first, I was just asking for help. But then once he started bringing up that he was going to physically harm me, he actually at one point. Well, how did he say he was going to physically harm you? He, he, you know, he said he, he threatened me. He said he'd like, me to, he'd like to go somewhere and be and settle this. And he actually called me a. I was how, like, how did he call you his. What, what, what phrase he did he He said the word. He said I was his. Like his. I was like, really? I'm sorry. I'm trying to understand. I want to understand. Uh, uh, yeah. You have to paint the scene for me because I wasn't there. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm trying. I'm just like, he said, I'm a bitch or whatever. And I was like, really? I was like, think you, can, you think you can beat me up, you? And I, and I said, I'm not going anywhere. But I never got close to him or raised my hands or nothing. I was still kind of stunned. I was just, I expected to get help, not be attacked for his dog biting me. I mean, you have to understand, I didn't go storming into a store waving a weapon or whatever. I, I gently walked into a store. You think the dog remembered you from the argument? 
with the other lady and f thought maybe that sense maybe that you were aggressive or no? I have I have no idea. I can't. Okay. But the th but the point is that that's really right. You don't expect. Really I understand yeah. what you're saying. You don't expect him to be rude to you. You expect him to say, "Oh my gosh, here's a my chair. Here's some it. water. Let's call 911. Exactly. Whatever it is." So, All right. So he doesn't. So what happened? So he what they happened was they called the police. Right. So meanwhile, he said something about you know he'd like to to sell this you know somewhere out like outside. It was like, "Oh, you want to fight me now? All right." So we go outside. So you went outside to fight. I went outside to whatever he said. I don't know. He just said, let's, he said, let's step outside. Okay. So he invites you to go outside. You go outside. And what does he do? He locks the door. Okay. And they call the police. Then the police come, right? Well, what happened was he locked the door. So I was like, oh man. So I, I kicked the door a few times. You kicked and the door? How are you doing that with a, with a, with a ripped testicle? I, you know what? It's kind of funny. I felt something, but it didn't hurt until like a day or two. It really started hurting a day later. That day it still hurt. I felt funny. What happened? The police get there and what happens? So the police get there, and the first thing they do, now remember, they have called the police, not me. So they assume I'm, I'm up to no good, I'm the troublemaker. And somebody had said, hey, there's a guy out here kicking the business. I just kicked it like three times. I didn't damage it. But then, and then uh, he patted me down. He thought he actually thought, he actually was going Well, to, no, that's what he should do. That's protocol, but go on. Yeah, he was looking like to actually, but he, remember, they had gotten their word in first. Right, I know. So that's what why it's was, protocol. I, I said, sir, before you get, we, we get carried away, just do me a favor. I want you to watch my dash cam. I want you to watch the video of this. He said, and he was like, you have video of this? I'm like, yes. Oh, I have two videos, actually. He's like, why do you have a dash cam? I think that's great, but I'm, I'm just wondering why you have a dash cam, because most people don't. Well, you visit Boca Raton in Florida. Very, very bad driving in Florida. Yeah. We, have, we get everything. We have very old people, very young people. Yeah, okay. I, 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 yeah I know. I live there. Okay, okay, so go on. Okay, so anyway, so yeah, so I have, yeah, so I have videos to protect ourselves as there's, there's an accident, like, and that's happened. That's actually happened to me. I've actually had to use my dash cam in court before. Okay. For insurance. So anyway, so... Uh, it just was just, and the funny thing is, it was just dumb luck because I always back in, always. That day I didn't because I just pulled in. Had I not backed in, I wouldn't have had video of it. Had you so, backed in, the other lady might have gotten the spot. But anyway, just tell yeah. me what the police do say, after they see lady, your I'm, dash I didn't cam. See the lady, Ron. Uh, he says, I'm so, I'm, he, he does a 180. He says, oh my goodness. He's like, That's, this is not what I heard. Just bear with me one minute. He, he's apologetic. Because he, they have told him a different story. Okay. Their story is I went there and tearing the place up. Okay. Like, what was no, the story no. you told the police when you called 911? That he came to the store. Uh, my dog jumped on him, and he came aggravating, talking with me inside the store. And I told him to leave, to leave, to leave, to leave. He won't leave. I said, let's go out. That's when I locked the door. So what were you calling? The, well, I presume you told the police he was kicking your door oh, down yeah, too. Oh yeah, yes, of course. Yeah. All right. I, I told the police that he was kicking the door. Uh, okay. All right. Though. So now, um, do the police call fire rescue? Um, yeah, they did, yeah. And did fire rescue um, inspect your privates? It, they did in his store, his restroom. In the restroom. All right. Yeah. And did fire rescue find any evidence of contact? No, no. Not what could, they could have expected, no. Well, because you had said the dog bit my testicles. Right, right. And it really hurts. They expected to see a bite wound. Did they find any evidence of a bite wound? At that point, no. All right. You then later go to a urologist. Is it the same day? The, the, the same day, of, a few hours later, I went and saw a, a family medicine doctor. So a nurse and her examined me thoroughly. Did she find any evidence of contact? Um, I mean... Was, or a bite, anything. Well, the evidence was I was very tender to palpation. Right. That's something you tell her, right? Like, in other words, she doesn't know if you're tender. You're the one who says, ouch, right? That's what tender means. Yes. Okay. So now, do you end up with any follow-up care for this bite to your testicles? Yes. What happened was, because she did find that I was injured, she still thought something was wrong. She referred me to a urologist. Okay. She's an you know, expert in that area. So less than a week later, I saw a local urologist, uh, and uh, he, found, he found evidence that I was... What evidence did he find? Well, what happened was um, later that day, my wife had looked at me, and I just not only was now she knows me, that area better than anybody else besides me. So, well, she said I looked a little swollen and red, but there was no like no no teeth marks in the thank goodness. But remember, I was wearing shorts and and, and, a, and underwear, so and it's a small dog too. It wasn't like this is a, a Doberman or a Great Dane. How great much Dane. does your dog weigh? Twenty five pounds. Too. And what kind of dog do you have? It's Italian water dog. Italian water water dog. dog. Go ahead. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, the urologist uh, examining me said that. Uh, that there was something there, but he said he wasn't sure if that was caused. He has caused. been complaining of exquisite tenderness in the left hemoscrotum. On physical examination to the scrotum, it shows no puncture wounds. There is some ductal ectasia present. I do not feel any of these issues 
are caused by the dog bite, but they can be aggravated and irritated by the dog bite, assuming there's a dog bite, because that's what I've got to figure out. What I've got to figure out is, are you a very angry man, angry that they're throwing you out and you're making a bigger deal of it in order to collect, or did the dog bite your testicle? That's what I need to find out, right? Because that's what determines whether you're entitled to eight grand in damages, right? Okay. What happens? You don't hear any of the argument he's having with the other lady in front of your store that ca or near your store that causes your employee to go out, right? No. All right. So what's the first thing that you notice with the, the plaintiff? Uh, so I came outside. Uh, I look around. I didn't see anything. Uh, then they said they, he's in a pharmacy next door. So I just wait by the door to make sure that nothing happened. I don't know. My dog was loose inside. For one second, I step over. Okay, is your dog always loose in the pet store? Yes, I have videos of my dog with customers. Yes, I know. I saw 400 videos of your dog being cute, but here's my question. <laughs> there is no question your dog jumped on him. Yes. Right. Yes. And so that I, I know that that's bad behavior on the part of a dog. They're not supposed to do that. He wasn't supposed to be there. He came yeah, out. He who? Uh, my dog. He right. Had, he had a, we had a baby fence. Okay. To, not for my dog, for all the dogs not to go to run loose in the store. Okay. My dog passed that. How uh, did your dog pass it? I left it open. I remember because okay. I was All right, right. That's, that's where the, neg the negligence comes in that you could be potentially liable for damages on. That's what I'm trying to explain to you for the future, but go on. Yes, and then my dog went up to the door when he made an attempt to go to his car and just heard my dog barking and came inside the store. I told him not to open the door. He opened the door anyway. And How fast did all this happen? Fast. Okay. Uh, and you go like this, but he's already opening the door. Everything is very fast. And what fast. happens? Your dog jumps on him. He jumps on him. Did your dog bite him in the testicle? No. Did your dog bite him at all? No, not at all. All right. When he walks in, what is it you say to him? I did you know that was the guy who had been fighting before? Yes. How did you know? Because you, you didn't see it. Everyone said, that's the guy. Because the car is parked right in front of my store. Right. So he opened the door. My dog jumps on him. And I grabbed my dog. He, How quickly did you grab the dog? Like right away. Okay. Like you can see me with my hands in my dog. Okay, right go on. When he's in the top of him. Okay. Uh, so he comes inside the store, uh, telling me that the dog beat me, the dog beat me, the dog beat me. And I keep saying, no, he didn't. I saw the whole thing. He didn't. He didn't. He keep coming after me. I secured my dog. What does coming after me mean? Like following me inside the store. And I keep telling him, no, he didn't get out of the store. Let's take this outside. Let's take this outside. Yeah. Did he think you were going to fight him? I guess so. Were you going to fight him? No, of course not. That's you why. You're just going to lock I, him out? I, yeah. Okay, smart. All right, so go I, on. That's what was my plan. Okay, the so he walks out and then you lock him out and what happens? He came out. He, I think he was waiting, me to, waiting for me to come outside. Of course I didn't. He did he to, try to open the door? Yeah, he did. Then he, he realizes it's locked. It's locked and then he kicked twice. He, the, it's a glass door, by the way. That's when I called the cops. Okay. I called the cops. The cops came. Three officers watched the video, come back to him, say, listen, he did not get beat. He keep it arguing and say, okay, if you got beat, let's call the paramedics. I call the fire rescue. So they called the fire rescue. They came. They asked to use the bathroom to check his private, what, what, what's going on. He came back. He said, listen, nothing happened. He, he keep arguing inside the store, you know, like... Did the police ask you for, whether you wanted him arrested for criminal mischief for kicking the door? No, I don't record. Okay. I don't rec you have a bunch of video that shows you from the back. He brought the store video that shows it from the front. Let's take a look at that. The dog comes to the door. The dog starts barking. You turn around, hear the dog barking, and open the door. He tells you to stop very quick. It all happens very quickly. You're already opening the door. But the dog is at the door, and you see the dog at the door. No. That's what makes it. Watch the video. The dog is at the door. You're going to your car. You turn around. You hear the dog barking, and that causes you to turn no. around. He says, wait, and he's pulling the dog. The dog jumps, and the dog jumps on you for sure, but you've got your prescription pack right in front of your testicles. I don't even know that the dog made contact with you. I keep saying the dog jumped on you. After he the grabs the dog, and you have immediately done what every man in your position would do, which is block your testicles with the bag. How did that dog have contact with your testicles? You're making it up. Play, play my video. And, All right, and let's you, play your video. I do want to play your video. 
Your Honor. Um, no, stop. We're going to play your video right now. Do you see how you hear something turn around and then decide to walk in and there's a dog barking right there? Your Honor. Yes or no? Do you see that? When you walk up, I walked up, I didn't know there was anybody standing there. And the dog wasn't barking then. The dog didn't bark till he bit me, till he lurched, jumped out of the store. And, you know, Honor, there's no evidence the dog bit you. Every but, professional who looks at you says there's zero evidence of what he's Your saying. Your Honor, that dog was. You said but you do my, understand that, right? Let's look at the police report. I never get to see In the police part. report, the police say there get, is absolutely no evidence to support what it is he's saying happened. There are no puncture wounds. There's no redness. There's no anything. The, and that's what the firefighters say as well. You know that because you've read the reports, right? Yes, I've read that, but they. The dog went under. You're saying I blocked the dog. He went under. The, he went under my. No, package. I'm saying you blocked your privates. I know. I, I'm the, not with, saying you blocked the dog. With the, with the, you said I tried to block with the bag. He was under the bag. He's a small dog. He he got me underneath. He came he came almost directly want, underneath I, me. I need to I need you to prove he bit your testicles, which is your story, and that's what gets you eight thousand dollars. I need you to prove it. The cops say there's no evidence. The firefighters say there's no evidence. Your family doctor says there's no evidence. The only evidence there is of anybody saying there's anything wrong is your urologist saying you have a cyst that has nothing to do with this, but he keeps saying it's tender. It's only you. You're angry as hell. You, you, you know, if, I, if someone bit Douglas's privates, Douglas would turn around, go in the car, call the cops right away. Instead, you're arguing with him for minutes. You want to fight him. You're kicking the door. You don't present as someone who actually got bit. You present as someone who's angry and is making it up to get money, $8,000. Did you try to get a lawyer to take your case? I did. Nobody would take it, would they? I did. Yeah. I want to tell you something. I know you think your dog is adorable, and your dog is adorable, but if you cannot control your dog from jumping at patrons in a place that is open to the public, shame on you. And another thing, in the hundreds of videos you wanted me to see about how great and cute your dog is, one of the things you showed me is the dog holding his own leash. In fact, you gave me two videos of that, walking up and down the shopping center holding his own leash. I know you think that's cute. You know what I see? I see a dog that's not on a leash, which is violation of the leash law in your town. You understand? Yes, I know you think your dog is just irresistible to everybody, but I had a child who was deathly afraid of dogs. So people like you who just let the dog roam, you know, that was a problem for me when my child was little. And she would crawl right up into my head because she was so terrified. And it'd be very hard to calm her. We have leash laws for a reason. It's kind of different when you're in a pet store. So long as you have a warning outside saying loose animals or something and your dog is, is controllable. If you have to run and grab your dog from jumping, your dog is not controllable. Your dog is used to doing whatever your dog wants to do, which mercifully is super cute. Right? And, and sweet, and she's only 27 pounds, she's not a vicious dog. I get all that. I also know that dog didn't bite that man. I know that. I've seen the video a hundred times. I know the dog didn't bite that man and he's making up the lawsuit. And he's not gonna win. He's not gonna get away with that. But you leave a little to be desired as a pet owner. You need to control the dog. So don't leave the little gate open anymore. Make sure you have the dog in the gate. And if your dog is gonna be prancing around the shopping mall, you are supposed to control the dog. The dog is not supposed to control itself. You got me? Yes, Your Honor. Verdict for the defendant. But you are. I never got to say on my hook. So both parties caught the wrath of the judge in this case, but the plaintiff did not prevail. He didn't get $7,999. Mr. Kinghorn, tell me what your reaction is. I was, uh, I was disappointed. There are certain laws in Florida, uh, Statute 767, that states that whether the dog bites you or just makes contact with you, the dog doesn't have to bite you. Whether I was wrong about that or not, I think I still think the dog bit me, but even if it didn't, she didn't want to award pain and yeah, suffering. Yeah, but you could else. not prove that the dog actually bit you. It like didn't touch you. It didn't look like he had, he had touched you at all. It didn't so look like he touched me at all. that's what the judge decided. But the statute says he's liable regardless. She didn't let me, she let me show that. She's not a Florida judge. She's not Mr. a- Mr. Kinghorn, something you have to understand. The judge lives in Florida. She's been a prosecutor and a judge in Florida. She knows the statutes very well in the state of Florida. The bottom line is you couldn't even prove the dog touched you. So- That video doesn't show a dog touching me, really? <laughs> okay. No, sorry about that. Okay. All right. Not only did the plaintiff catch the wrath of the judge, so did the defendant, Mr. Macedo. So let's see how he responds. You know, Mr. Macedo, bottom line here, had your dog not been loose in the store, you wouldn't be here right now. You know that. Yes, I know that. Have you learned something from this whole case? Yes, I did. What the judge just told me, 
Uh, I know it's a violation, like when I leave my dog water leash, if not secured. Um, but I know my dog didn't beat him. That's why I'm, I'm here. I know my dog didn't bite him. Okay. All right. I hope you have learned a valuable lesson. So good yes. luck to you. Okay. Thank you, sir. And congratulations. No, thank you. Thank you. That was a relief. Okay. Thank you. This is a fascinating case, Harvey. What's your perspective on it? Okay, Doug, well, this is a case where video is king. And, you know, we've seen this before where people take cell phone videos and whatnot. I got to tell you, the world has changed f over the last 10 years. That cell phone video is great for sure. But everywhere you look, there seems to be a surveillance camera these days. And surveillance cameras can be key. They're key in this case. And so if you can get surveillance video to back up your claim in court, it's worth going to a store, wherever you say an injury or an accident occurred, to see if somebody caught it on camera. That camera makes the difference between winning and losing a lot. Marilyn, have you ever had a pet besides a dog or a cat? Yes, I had a turtle when I was little. Yeah. I don't think we ever had a hamster. I don't know. Problem with I, them is they get loose in the house and then you never see them again. Yeah, well, they're, that's they're what nice happened with my turtles, turtles. now that you mention it. But. Wait, didn't, it didn't your brother used to torment you with the turtle somehow? My eldest brother, Tony, right. uh, Tony used to put the turtle inside of Wonder Bread. Right. And then he, he, he had already bitten into the Wonder. He did this at a party once. Right. He had already bitten into the Wonder Bread, so it looked like there was a bite of a sandwich. Then he put the head of the turtle there, and he would Poking look at me, out. and he'd go, oh, I can't believe I, I haven't thought about this <laughs> in 15-something years. And then he would go, as though he was going, I was, he was gonna buy, I was like five. I'm screaming at the top of my. Right, he right. thinks it's really funny. It was like right. a party trick for him. He was wow. much older. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, so I've had a turtle fish. We've had fish. Yeah, speaking of fish, you had a fish. And I, I, I found this in your office, and I think you'll probably remember. Oh my you God. You had a fish, and you have a plaque. That's why in you your asked office. this. That's why you no, both you particularly this selected this viewer question, right. isn't it? Right. And um, this is a particular fish that you had. It and is a particular. City of Miami police detectives. I no, think it was Judge made. Alex. Oh, Judge, Judge Alex. Alex gave me that because he, gave it to he was uh, going to take my fish tank and then some unfortunate series of events happened. Right, Judge and Alex Ferrer. Right. right, and uh, Alex ended up... Um, yeah, Rambo is what we used to call that fish because right. it would pop out, hit the floor, and live. Uh, but then eventually it just, um, yeah. things bad went, things happened. Bad things happened. So Let's just leave that, that story for another day. Let's just leave that story for another day because the FBI was involved. And oh, that's, that's right. just a story for another day right. uh, if we ever get permission to tell it. But that's, it, the, yes, FBI the FBI was involved. The FBI was involved. disappearance of we're your just, fish. We're just going to leave, leave it lie story here. Story for another day. This is the plaintiff, Ronald O'Donnell. He says he brought his car into the defendant's shop for a new alternator, and during the repair, his car caught fire. The defendant was negligent because he didn't disconnect the battery before he did the work. His car was burned up, and he's suing for the $814.68. He's now out. This is the defendant, Gary Wells. He says he took the battery out of the guy's car before he started the work on it. But the alternator still had a little juice left in it and a small fire broke out. The fire was caused by a pre-existing condition in the fuel rail. This guy's just trying to get out of paying his bill and is owed nothing. He's accused of lighting it up. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket. The plaintiff says that he brought his car to the defendant's repair shop. Uh, the car caught fire and now it's toast. But the defendant says the car caught fire because of a pre-existing condition, so he did nothing wrong. It's the case of your car is fire. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, Anna. Okay, Mr. O'Donnell, what happened? I had an alternator go bad on my car and I dropped it off at uh, Elite Motors in front of the place and told them I needed an alternator replaced and an oil change and a filter. I left the place, two hours later they called me and they said there was a slight problem, there was a small fire in the car from the fuel rail, which was they said was defective. How, did they tell you how the fire started? They said that when they moved the alternator, it touched the fire, the rail, and caused a spark and a gas leak. It caused a gas leak or, the, or what was it, it they were, they it, were claiming? 
they were claiming that they disconnected the battery, which was not disconnected. When they, dis when they disconnected uh, the alternator, the hot wire from the battery touched the fuel rail and burnt it all up and put a hole in it and gas leaked out. That's what, you feel, that's what you feel happened. What did they say happened, though? I'm trying to understand what they told you happened. They told me there was still juice in the alternator. Once the battery's disconnected, there's no juice anywhere, completely no juice whatsoever, period. Okay, Mr. Wells, um, you're working, is it you who was working <clears throat> on the car or you are? No, it was an employee of mine. He was okay. working on the car. I can assure you, we did remove the battery. We removed the battery not only to prevent such a thing occurring, but to charge it because it was a bad state of charge because the alternator was in fact bad. Uh, the problem with, he, this is conjecture on his part. He wasn't present when this was done. I can assure you it was done. Were you Alternator present when it was done? The, pardon me? Were yes, you? I was. I was in my office. I well, I know you're in your car. office, but oh, I, you don't know what the, guy, the, the mechanic did or didn't do, do you? Yeah, I was, my, my No, you know what he tells you. You know what he tells you, but you know that he disconnected the battery? You saw that with your own I, eyes? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, my desk sits in front of a large window that overlooks the shop. Yes, okay. indeed. And, and, and instead of yes. working on the papers that are on your desk, you're staring at every mechanic to see what they're doing. Well, I did see the fire start. And well, no, I know where the, the fire, fire will catch your attention. That I know. Exactly. Yeah, so but I what happened before it is what the question is. The question that I am asking is why sure. would I believe that you are staring at, why is, is a mechanic here to testify? No, he's not. Why not? Does he still work uh, for you? Yes, absolutely. Oh. He's a good mechanic. Okay. All right, so now, why would I believe that you're staring at what the mechanic's doing instead of working on the stuff on your desk before the fire well, happens? I wasn't staring, I wasn't, like you said a moment ago yourself, a fire has a way of capturing your attention. Yes, as but as I'm as not asking about whether or not, I'm not asking you questions about what happened once the fire happened. I'm asking you about questions about what happened before the fire happened. So yes, I know the fire caught your attention. I have no doubt in my mind that you were watching the fire from then on out, everything, that you were on it. My question is, how would you possibly have been on it before that? That's my question. When I went out there, immediately went out there, the battery was removed from the car and on a charger. Okay. So that that so how that do you suppose a fire happened? Question right there. How does the a fi how does a fire happen the then? How does a fire happen? Because there was a there was a faulty fusible link that caused the capacitor in the alternator to hold a charge. When he went to remove the alternator, his wrench hit the rail. It created a spark. His wrench hit what rail? The fuel rail. The fuel rail. The the <laughs> fuel rail in question. Right, and the wrench hit the fuel rail. Why? Just because he was just, in there, just, you know. Exactly. Right. right. So he. Exactly. So, now, he, so he wasn't working on the fuel rail. His wrench accidentally he, hits the fuel rail, and then this spark happens? That created the spark. Mr. O'Donnell contends that the spark caused a breach in the fuel rail. That is not correct. The reason I say that is because when that spark occurred, if there was existing gas in the engine compartment due to the pre-existing breach in the fuel rail. He Wait, was oh, it says who, rail. just stop a second. You, sure. you, you just introduced a new element. There was a pre-existing leak in the fuel rail. How do you know that? It was obvious, Mr. O'Donnell was shown the fuel rail. He was shown where the, where the spark occurred, where the wrench hit the fuel rail. He was also shown at the bottom of the fuel rail where there, where there was a breach. The breach that caused the leaking gasoline that, that gas is in that rail at 2,200 pounds per square inch. It was a minor breach. It caused fuel to exit that fuel rail. It collected the engine compartment. And when my mechanic hit the, hit the fuel rail with the wrench, created the spark. By the way, why it is your not. mechanic hitting the fuel rail with the wrench? Well, like you just stated a moment ago, it's, 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 it's an engine compartment. There's not a lot of room. And in order to take the alternator out, he was using the wrench to disconnect the alternator. He accidentally hit the fuel rail with his wrench. Mr. Riddell has been told this five times. All right, so let's, uh, according to you, Mr. O'Donnell, you have several statements from other mechanics, but I don't have that. Did you submit those into evidence? I have them right here in front of me from five different auto repair places. Are they notarized? I didn't get them notarized, no. Okay, are they signed? They're all signed, yes. Are they on letterhead? 
or no, uh, they're not. None of them are on letterhead. One of them, o O'Reilly's on letterhead. The other ones are just from. They didn't have letter. They're just written out. Advanced Auto Parts. All right. And, uh, Take Lenses, the first one uh, and Lenses. hold it up against the camera. Okay. I don't know how you think I'm supposed to see evidence that you keep on your side. You know. Mm. Go right there. Don't move. Yeah, this is, you know, it's typewriting on a piece of paper. I mean, okay, show right. me the next one. Yeah, I know, anybody could do that. But show me the okay. next one. No, the one I just showed you, this is the guy's shop. He's got a thousand alternators in there. Yeah, that's great. And he knows everything about them. Okay, this that's is That's wonderful, one. but you know what would really help? If he was testifying, and I could cross-examine right. him and know how good he was. But, you know, you're, you're getting these things on a piece of paper instead of right. on their letterhead or on their bills or something. Okay, you can put that one down. You know, oddly, this one's on a, a little type of, but at least it's an auto parts place. All right, right let's yes. see. But every single one of those, presuming that they are what they purport to be, says there is no charge in the fuel rail that would ignite. So it has to be that the battery had not been disconnected. So explain to me why a breach in the fuel rail or a little hole or a gas leak or whatever, why a wrench touching it would cause a fire. There was a bad fusible link in the capacitor in the alternator, which caused it to hold the charge. Normally it would not. The fusible link was bad. The capacitor held the charge, much like capacitor in, if you have an HVAC unit at home, that's what starts the fan. It holds a charge. That's what happened. Then I think you guys should be more careful. If, something, if such a thing can happen, that the capacitor holds a charge, then I guess you all ought to be more careful to not uh, end up with a fire in someone's car. I'm ruling That's in favor true, of like the plaintiff said, in this case. Pay the man back. $814.68, verdict for the plaintiff. Thank you, Judge. So the judge finds for the plaintiff in this case. Mr. Wells, you're the defendant. Uh, what do you think about the judge's decision? What's your well, reaction? I don't agree with it. I think a technical explanation was what was required. So now I do not agree with her uh, adjudication, but I'm stuck with it. Well, uh, you know, I'm not surprised. Listen, I'm sorry you lost, but that's the judge's verdict, and obviously you have to exactly. live with that. Mr. O'Donnell, yeah, exactly. you have prevailed here. Amazing. You'll get the $814 you're seeking. Uh, you work hard on this. Are you satisfied? I I'm very sure satisfied. I should have won. I should have won long. I shouldn't have to be going through this for 10 months. I went through this crap. Yes. So it's been right. 10 months trying to get this resolved. Yes. So I appreciate it. Well, you can relax now and, and get a good night's Thank sleep. You. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Good for you. Okay, Harvey, there's a man who worked hard on this case. What do you think? Doug, we talk about this a lot, that, you know, when you go to court, usually it's you versus the other person. But if it's a case where you need an expert, somebody who has knowledge beyond yours, and it's essential to the case, like here, where you need a mechanic to say, this was done and that caused the fire in the car. The plaintiff had that with the mechanic. Without that, the plaintiff would have lost this case. It's not just guessing. It's not just assuming. You need an expert witness when the information is simply beyond your knowledge base or the judge's. What is your favorite dinner table conversation? My favorite dinner table conversation, I would say it's um, the same as, you know, every household in America. Religion very and politics? No, very ordinary. I would say <laughs> probably pinball, cars, and military history, which we never <laughs> talk about, which I never get to talk about at the dinner table in my house. But uh, what do we usually talk about? A little bit about work and, uh, you know, what happened that day kind of thing. We try to draw our kids out. And, and then the one thing we usually have to stay away from is politics. with our kids is politics, right? What's the one phrase that can get them to just roll their eyes and walk away from you? Let me ask, Let me you, ask you a question. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Let me Wham, ask you a question. Boom, it. they're all Turn out of the room. Turn around the other way, the <laughs> eyes roll, and they're like, they know what's coming. And so that's the end of that, right? That's going to do it for us now, and we will see you for the next session of The People's Court.